Like many of you, my original fascination with 3D printing stemmed from the dream of being able to turn ideas into end-use parts with the click of a button. Fundamental to this is the use of fiber-filled filaments due to their superior mechanical properties. By simply adding carbon or glass fibers to common plastics like PETG or nylon, we can make 3D printable plastics that are as strong or as stiff as some metals. The downside to this is that we have accelerated wear of moving parts that interact with the filaments, like nozzles and gears. I've tried quite a few nozzles over the years, but I never felt like I found one that could do everything that I wanted to, until I found this. This is the nozzle from the Mark Forged Onyx. It's my favorite nozzle for abrasives and general printing. It's a great nozzle, and it solved a lot of the problems that I had with traditional hardened steel nozzles. And today, we're going to dissect it, run some tests, and compare it to other nozzles on the market. Mark Forge is not sponsoring this video. They have no idea I'm making it. Not that they would care to sponsor me. The money they make is in selling printers and materials, but I want to be fully transparent to you guys that the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. This video idea came about when it was time to do routine maintenance on my Mark Forge Onyx and remove and replace its existing nozzle. I decided to take this opportunity to cut this nozzle in half for you guys to show you how it works and what's innovative and interesting about this design. Mark Forge has opted to split the nozzle into two components in order to reduce cost while maintaining the flow properties inside of the nozzle and potentially improving thermal performance. First, a brass body is machined. Next, a small hardened steel tip is pressed into the brass. In order to ensure that the steel tip is locked in place, they crimp some of the brass over to permanently embed the tip in the body. To do this, they simply use a die and apply some pressure to crimp over the remaining brass and embed the tip for good. While this design may seem similar to the Olsen Ruby nozzle, it's actually quite different. Because the tip has to be pressed in from the top side, the bore of the nozzle actually has to be quite a bit larger, which reduces the efficiency of the flow and increases back pressure in the nozzle. But there's a more glaring risk. Because the tip is pressed in from the top side, you risk eventually eroding the brass body with abrasive material, and then the tip can actually come loose over time. Let's take a moment to look at the thermal properties of three common nozzle materials, steel, brass, and copper. For our analysis here, we're going to consider two thermal properties of these materials, thermal conductivity and specific heat capacity. You can think of thermal conductivity as how quickly energy will flow into or out of a material, and specific heat capacity as how much energy the material can store. This is an overly simplified description of these properties, so for you engineers out there, please bear with me. Looking at the thermal properties here, thermal conductivity is the biggest differentiator. You can see that brass is about three times less than copper, and steel is about three times lower than brass. Assuming that we're always dealing with a nozzle of the same size and geometry, because each one of these materials has a different density, they will all weigh a different amount. Now, specific heat capacity is the amount of energy stored per unit of kilogram. And therefore, it's important that we multiply this by density to figure out how much energy each one of these nozzles can hold. And what we find is that steel actually holds the most amount of energy, then brass, and then copper. So in theory, on short zigzags, the thermal conductivity of steel shouldn't matter compared to how much energy it can store, and vice versa. If we're doing long streaks, then copper should be vastly superior to steel because eventually the energy reserves inside of a nozzle will be depleted. But let's put this to the test. For these tests, I'm going to be using my stock Prusa Mark III with an E3D V6. I think it's indicative of what many people use today, and it's a consistent platform. It's the one machine in this house that I don't go out of my way to mod. I'm going to compare the flow rates from four common nozzles, all with different materials. First, the Mark Forge Onyx, an E3D Nozzle X, a Fetus plated copper nozzle, and a standard brass nozzle from E3D. 
For this test, I used black ESUN ABS Plus at 250 degrees Celsius. The test conditions are the same as what CNC Kitchen uses. I extrude a half meter of filament at a constant flow rate. I collect the samples and then measure them and compare the results against a baseline run to know when the extruder is under extruding, which is typically due to the motor skipping steps. All right, time for the results. Initially, I was quite surprised by these. I expected the flow rate performance of the nozzles to reflect the thermal conductivity of the materials from which the nozzles were manufactured. For instance, I expected the copper nozzle to come in first, followed by the brass E3D nozzle, then the Mark Forge, and then last, the steel nozzle X. I was sure that the brass E3D would outperform the nozzle X, I figured it would be the same nozzle geometry, but just with a more efficient uh, thermal material. However, this didn't end up being the case, and I suspect it's because there are bigger factors at play. There are many things that determine how quickly the energy flows into and out of material. Things like the thermal interface, how well the nozzle fits into the heater block, how tight those threads are, the temperature difference between the two, as that temperature difference changes, there is a higher propensity for energy to flow from one into the other. So knowing all of that, what should you do with this data? My opinion? Don't do anything. All these nozzles basically perform the same. Um, I mean, if you're trying to push like an extra like one or two millimeters cubed per second, don't bother, just get a CHT. But if you need an abrasion resistant nozzle, Go with one from a manufacturer that you trust or one in a price range that you can afford. For me, because I print abrasives on a V6, I'm going to continue using the Mark Forge simply because it's brass, it will seal better against the heat break and prevent leaking. Thanks for watching. See you around.